Thanks for tuning in. Today, we are gonna build the coolest birdhouse. I've had an idea to do a custom birdhouse like this. It's, let's face it, it's not gonna be a birdhouse. I don't think birds are ever gonna live in this thing, hopefully, because it's too nice and too cool. It's pretty. <laughs> but it is made so you could use it outside. Anyway, in our little town, we have a meat market that has been in business for over 100 years. They, they're famous. They're famous, like celebrities order their, their holiday hams and that kind of stuff from dryers. And not only that, but it's also just a very cool, unique looking building. And so that's what we're gonna use as our custom made birdhouse. This is gonna be a one of a kind kind of project yeah. for us, but it hopefully will give you some ideas on what you might do to make a custom birdhouse for somebody you know. What a cool, custom gift this would be for anybody. Anybody would like it. Like for Christmas or whatever else. I'm trying to think about what to do with this and I think it's a popular enough business in our little town that maybe the next time there's a cancer fundraiser or an auction for some kind of really good event, maybe we'll donate it and, yeah. and hopefully it will um, get some money for a really good cause. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll make five more of them and put them on the market. <laughs> Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss out on any of the things that we're doing. Like the shenanigans. Right. Also, stay tuned through this entire episode because we have some super cool new t-shirts and we're going to give one away. So at some point during this video, we'll tell you how you could be a winner. All right, let's get started. The first step in this project is to take some photos of the store. It's important to take the pictures as straight on as we can. Next we use Photoshop to straighten out the perspective. I use the transform tool and some guidelines to make the building and sign appear as straight as possible. Here you see our final 2 by 3 foot layout ready for the printer. We've chosen to have this printed on a matte finish, self-adhesive sign material. While this is out at the printer, we will create a template so we can keep working. Okay, now that we have this all printed out and taped together, we can use our trusty old spray adhesive to make a template. We're gonna use the adhesive to glue this onto this cardboard. The reason I'm using this kind of cardboard rather than corrugated cardboard is because I am going to have to trace this, maybe even with an X-Acto knife, and corrugated just doesn't, it doesn't cut as well because it's got all, those, got all those grooves in it. It's too groovy. What I did here was took two sheets of paper and made this to exact scale um, and then I had to tape it together. So you can see the line here where the seam is. Uh, and the reason for that is just because it's larger than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. If you wanted to do this a little easier than I did, you could probably just make a birdhouse that's eight and a half by 11 in the first place. But I just can't ever do things the easy way, so. That's why we're doing it this way. All right, so let's glue this down. Oh, and by the way, here's an extra sheet of the paper so you can kind of see the one half that I had. Cut that there, taped it together. Bob's your uncle. Not entirely where I want it. That smells kind of piney. White Christmas. Okay, so that's glued down there. Next, we're gonna cut it very carefully along that arch top. Okay, we're just gonna use a blade knife and a straight edge to make these end cuts. And this is the part that's gonna take a little patience. I'm gonna to try to just put enough pressure to make this cut one time. But it didn't work. Now my main concern is just staying in that, staying in that first groove. There, not bad. So now we have a nice clean template that we can use to make our arc on the plywood blanks. And we'll cut that out with a jigsaw. I just happen to have some plywood from a previous project that was black and that works out pretty nice anyway so 
I'm going to use that. I'm just going to line up the bottom and the sides. And then because it's black plywood, I'm just going to use a white um, colored pencil to make my mark like that. Also, because this is an old project, there are some holes here. We're going to have to fill these in so they don't make a void in the, the vinyl that we put over this. <clears throat> but in the meantime, we can use these instead of clamps. I'm just going to go ahead and put a screw in here with these two pieces lined up. And that will assure us that these are not going to move while we cut it with the jigsaw. Well, that's good, nice and smooth. I went nice and slow because I didn't want that blade to wander and I wanted a nice, clean, smooth cut. So that worked out pretty well. Now I'm just going to carefully use my sander with these still clamped and screwed together um, to get rid of any imperfections here. I want to be sure to hold this flat so I don't change the angle. And now just a little finished sanding so it's ready for paint. So we've been thinking about where best to put the entry hole for the bird. And even though <clears throat> this probably won't ever be used as an actual birdhouse, that's more for looks, we read on the Google that it should be at least six inches in height, which would put it about here where there is this window for an air conditioner. So I guess that's kind of okay. The other thing we had thought about was up here we might do it where we're going to have a little sign stick out later, but I think this is probably better. So for our hole, we're going to use a Forstner bit. That's an inch and three quarters. And I'm just going to make a center mark and then use the little point there, the brad point, as kind of a reference. And then I'm going to take my awl and smack it with the hammer, just like Clark Griswold would when he catches a squirrel on Christmas vacation. Okay, well my little baby drill press won't even reach here, so I'm gonna use just a hand drill, which is always a challenge for me because I can't drill a straight hole to save my soul, but I'll do my best. Just got a piece of scrap plywood underneath this so I don't get tear out, and I'm gonna clamp it down to that, so hopefully nothing bad happens. The angle of our roof is 22 and a half degrees, so Kevin is ripping the boards. We square up one end of the board that will be one of the sidewalls. Then using his miter gauge on the table saw, Kevin cuts the boards to length. I just love using this tool. It makes me go. <laughs> and makes me do this. ready to do some kind of joinery for the peak of the roof and after playing around with a couple different ideas I've decided to use biscuits. I've set my biscuit joiner to an angle the same angle as the roof and made three corresponding marks on either panel and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these six slots Now the question is how to clamp them while the glue dries. Okay, one other thing here before I clamp up the two pieces of roof, I put in some pocket holes so I can attach these to the front and back of the birdhouse. I'm gonna put this in my end vise and then take a piece of scrap wood and just mark the height right there and then I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle there and sort of use this to help me clamp this together because when I put this together because I have two miters here at 22 and a half degrees that that will be 45. I'm ready to glue this baby together. I'm not using my fancy new glue bottle because I still had some old glue that I want to get rid of so this is a good project for that. The biscuits basically provide a little bit of stability over time to this joint, but mostly it helps to line this thing up as we glue it together like this.
And the last part of this clamping debacle <laughs> is that I wedged one more 45 degree angle piece into here to push this joint together. And now we're just gonna wait for the glue to dry. I'm going to cut the dado in the um, front, back, and side pieces that will receive the bottom quarter inch piece of uh, plywood. And I have these little spacers to make it easy to make these adjustments. It's a quarter inch, just a straight bit in this router table. And then I'm gonna be three eighths of an inch in from the very bottom. And then also three eighths of an inch high to the top of the bit. The sides are pretty easy because this dado is gonna run all the way through, but the front and the back are going to be blind. In other words, they're not gonna show all the way through because you would see those on the edges. So um, we're going to mark this with a piece of masking tape so we know where to plunge the work in and then run it through and then we'll know where to stop. So we'll leave all the material on the very ends for probably a quarter inch or so. Another thing I like to do just so I know that mark is coming up is put a little arrow So when I see this arrow on the tape, I know that my mark is coming up and I can go real slow and be careful. Now is the time to cut the biscuit slots that will hold the front to the sides. I've got all the biscuit slots cut and next I am ready to glue this all together. So I'm just gonna get some glue in the slots here. And here I will get some glue in these slots. And a generous amount of glue on the ends. Get good coverage here. That's really soaking in. I'm going to give it a little extra. In order to finish this clamp setup, I ended up taking a my piece of scrap plywood that I typically use to um, just do odds and ends, clamp my face frame work down with the pocket holes. And anyway, I drilled a hole in it so that I could reach through with this clamp and get, it, get the clamping strength down. Otherwise, I just didn't have enough. I didn't have anywhere to clamp this relatively narrow piece to. Next, we can assemble the roof to the sides and front and back. To drive the pocket screws into the tight space, Kevin uses an angle driver that attaches to his drill. This is how the bottom fits into the dado that we cut earlier. Okay, this is fun. Yeah. Isn't this a nifty shape now that it's all together? It's beautiful. And it's exact one two hundredth scale to the actual building. I made wow. that up. Huh? But the front is to scale. I can assure you that because of Photoshop magic. And what I have to do next is I'm going to prime some of the surfaces that will show and paint the roof black and the top of this black. Mm. And then this just came in, which is the sign material that we're going to use on the front and sides. Oh, that's just so exciting. 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 Very exciting. exciting. Okay, stay tuned. Can, can you hear me? <laughs> can you? Okay. I got it all sanded so you can go back inside now. <laughs> For the primer, I'm just going to use a little bin one, two, three. And like I said, not the whole thing is going to show. But these parts that do, I want to make sure look as good as the rest of the thing. Also, I just want to make sure there's no drips because I don't want any lumps. I did the same thing that I did for the front and the sides. I took a picture of the sign, got it to the right proportions, and printed it out on this sign material. And I'm going to use a quarter inch piece of plywood to mount that on. And then I'm going to kind of cut 
a couple of prongs and hopefully attach with some hot glue. Now I'm just going to move this fence in a quarter of an inch. It's not a super great fence, but <laughs> a little wonky. Okay, I'm going to cut to this line, which is the end of the sign area. Here it is all cut out, so we have the two prongs. And then here's just a sample on some scrap wood of two holes drilled in, and then it'll fit in there pretty nice. My, my general idea has been to put hot glue in there, but I might just make it removable. Pretty snug fit. So again, fold it, loosely line it up on the whole thing, and then find that one sticky corner apply some pressure right on that point and then with the rest of it lined up take the backer off and stick it in place then when I turn it over I can just kind of use the sign as a straight edge to trim that excess off. I'm going to use that little template that I made as a guide um, to drill these holes for the sign. This is my cardboard template that I initially used for all the cutouts and whatnot and I've marked on here where the top and the corner go so if I ever need to do this again I can and I'm just going to line it up there. I've got a brad point drill bit loaded in my drill and I've got this clamp down. I'm going to try and find a way to clamp this down. I think I can get a big spring clamp on there. Just barely reaches. I'm gonna kind of use those holes to guide me. So I drill nice and straight. I'll take it off and see if it works. Fits pretty good. Want to win one of our cool t-shirts? Here's how. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, leave us a nice comment before Thanksgiving, tell us what size you wear, we only have large and extra large. We will put all the names of the people who do this into a hat and draw one winner on Thanksgiving. Okay Kathy, it's the moment of truth. Yep. Our box is all finished, we painted the parts that will show, and the front, back, and the two sides will be covered with this 3M sign material. Um, it's called Scotch Cal. This is a matte finish, which is pretty cool. I like it a lot. I yeah. painted the roof and the top edge flat black, so it's all going to be kind of that, you know, <laughs> smooth looking flat surface that's all in style these days. It's going to be tricky. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, we can do it. People could die. <laughs> People could get sick. Yeah, people could get COVID. It could get ugly. There may be diarrhea involved. <laughs> so wear your diaper. <laughs> My plan is, so I've, I've I laid these out in Photoshop in such a way that we could do one front and one side yeah. without a like seam. Two pieces. That's our perfect world. If things get ugly, then we're gonna go quickly to plan B and make a slice and we'll do four separate sides. But I think if we take our time, we work together as a team, mm -hmm. this could work out nice. Yep, it will. I have faith. So this is a, a sticky material, you know, with the background there, we have to peel it off. The plan is going to be for me to line up this bottom right corner after we've peeled off a corner back and kind of folded it and then I'll I'll stick that with the rest of the backer still on so we can still kind of move it a little bit and then from underneath I'll kind of peel it back this way but not until I line up this entire bottom right and then hold it in place while you peel that out and then I can position it down and as as Kathy pulls it out I'll kind of smooth it down so it stays attached it's sticky once it's on there whew, 
No moving it. There's no moving it. And once we get this all affixed, then we'll move to the side. We just have to be careful because as you pull it that way, you know, it's going to be pulling it off of this. Right. Maybe we should make a little cut on the back of the backer. <gasps> that's a good idea. Make that. Ahead of time? Yeah. I think that's the best option. The only special tools that we need for this are an X-Acto knife. And we have this little, you could use a spatula, but this is kind of a squeegee for this kind of thing. Um, it's real it's hard, just, heavy. But it's flexible, so it's not going to scratch our sign material. And then we, you know, if we have any air bubbles, we'll get them out of there. If things go awry and we have a wrinkle or a bigger air bubble, then we'll go to the old hair dryer. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> we put a piece of cardboard down here just to make it nice and flat. Softer. Yeah. I'm just using a painter's tack rag to get off any dust. Because you don't want that underneath here. And at some point, I just got to take the plunge. So right there, we're connected. Okay. The bottom's lined up. That's lined up pretty well, so I'm gonna go ahead and push that area down. Now, if I hold this up a little bit, Kathy, yep. you can start pulling that slowly. Okay, now I wanna lean it back down on that and work my way across the bottom. Roll this beautiful bean footage. <laughs> okay, so I don't really want to no. cut this right now, or do I? You might want yeah, to, because you should. can't lean it on there. All right, we'll end for end this beast. Let that lay. Okay. Just have a nice new blade on this X-Acto knife. I'll hold it down. Show perform surgery. Cardboard that we put down is helping that a little bit. Gives it a little bit of give basically. So I want to be careful not to cut into the paint that I just put on but also <clears throat> I don't want this to be totally flush otherwise if there's a lip of this sticky stuff over the wood that'll be a spot that it could peel off over time. Mm -hmm. Formerly I'm a brain surgeon so I have very steady hands for stuff like this. On the downside I had three cups of coffee so that's not good. <laughs> 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 uh, I would hit I would hit you if you didn't have a knife in your hand. This thing's about to bleed out. Okay. Well the overhang overhang of the roof is one little issue, but also we weren't entirely square when we aligned that front, so this is gonna run off a little bit. See how that is? running off. So we're going to have to cut this after all. Okay. Okay, so we cut this after all. <clears throat> we're going to again start in the bottom right corner. There's just a little overhang here, so with this corner bent, then we can kind of line it up, get it up under there, and, and then start. Peel it from the back. Yep. To... You know, I think this would be a great Christmas gift or gift idea for somebody. Oh, yeah. Take a nice picture of their house. Print it on this them a little house. After working with this material a little bit longer, it kind of seems like it's heat activated. It has a whole different feel to it when you heat it up and it kind of seems like that that's what really activates the adhesive. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can almost feel the wood grain. Yeah, yeah, underneath here now, it just feels like it's fused together for good. Now I'm just going to carefully cut out the the hole, the entry hole for the bird, in case anybody actually uses it for a birdhouse. I'm trying to just 
let the blade right along the edge of the hole. There it is. I planned the hole so it was kind of in this window area where there was an air conditioner so it didn't take out any of the cool stuff, signage and whatnot. And then right under that hole, of course, is a little hole for a dowel rod perch. Okay, so the last thing to do is to install our little sign, which isn't that cute. So that goes up above the bird hole and it's just gonna sit in those two holes that we drilled yesterday. I'll push that down all the way later. And then the perch right there, put a dab of glue on that and pound it in a little bit so it's nice and sturdy. And this is all finished. Ready for some pictures. Well, this was a pretty fun one. Got to use some Photoshop skills as well as do some woodworking. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing about it? I just think it looks really cool. Still smells like paint. Oh, it does. <laughs> I think it is such a neat gift idea for anybody. You can take a neat picture of their house, make that. Who wouldn't like that? Don't forget, you can win a t-shirt. Just follow the simple rules. Number one, like and subscribe to our channel. Number two, leave us a really nice comment by Thanksgiving. Number three, <laughs> tell us what size. Number three, tell us what size you wear. We only have large and extra large. And what we'll do is take all the people who make comments, put their names in a hat, and make the drawing on Thanksgiving. We'll make the announcement and then it'll be up to you to email us your address. That's how we'll do it. Great. We don't want to put everybody's address out there on the on the YouTube. No. <laughs> or in the Google. Right. So there's one other little surprise that we have this week in this episode mm -hmm. that would also make another gift idea. Not only did we make the birdhouse, we made a custom Kleenex box dryers meat market kleenex box is that cool this could be your house this could be somebody's shop that's a friend of yours who knows could be anything but for us it's a it's a dryers kleenex box <laughs> really handy during the cold and flu season or covid yeah. pandemic <laughs> so thanks again for tuning in we have really enjoyed these videos we hope you have too please leave us a comment please give us some feedback and not only encourages us to keep going, but it also helps our algorithm on the YouTube. That's important. A doctor told me that. <laughs> so until next time, keep, keep your, your biscuits, biscuits dry. dry.